Hey everyone, I'm Liz Ferry and today I'm going to show you how to make some basic clothes for your crochet dolls. In this tutorial I'll show you how to make a jacket or a vest. This pattern is really easy to customize to any size doll, but I'll be making mine to fit these two different dolls. My realistic body doll and my basic doll. If you want to make your jacket with a hood or collar, make sure to check out my other tutorial to see how to make the hood first. Some other things you'll need for this tutorial are a crochet hook, you can use any size you like, I'm going to use a size E, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle to sew in your ends, you'll need bobby pins or stitch markers to keep track of your stitches, and you'll need yarn. You could really use any yarn to dress your doll, but I find a thinner yarn works better to make a light sweater, and a thicker yarn works better for making a thicker coat. So I'll be using crochet thread to make a sweater, and worsted weight yarn to make a coat. I'm using Rose Pink from Karen Simply Soft, but you can use any color you like. If you're making yours with crochet thread, you might want to add more rows to make up for the size of the thread, or you could use a different hook size, like a size G. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make your jacket using worsted weight yarn. If you want, you could use a zipper or buttons to sew onto your jacket when it's done. If you're doing that, you'll also need a needle and thread. I'll be using this pink zipper that I shortened to the right size. You could use buttons or velcro or hooks or snaps, or you could just sew the front closed or leave the front open. I'll put a link to where I got this zipper in the description below. If you're using a zipper, make sure to use a zipper with an open bottom so that you can open the jacket. And if you'd like a written pattern, you can find one in my Ravelry store. That link is also in the description below. I'm going to start by creating a chain that's the same width for the neck opening that I want to make for the vest. So I'm going to chain 12 to create a high neckline for this vest. The length of your chain may vary if you have different tension, a different hook or yarn, or if you want a lower neckline, so just make sure to measure your chain against the body of your doll. If you're making a hooded vest or a vest with a collar, just continue where you left off on the hood or collar at the next row and skip making the foundation chain. So I chained 12 for this doll since I'll be making it with a high neckline. If you want to make a lower neckline, like I did for my basic doll shirt tutorial, you should chain a larger number. If you want to see how to do that in more detail, see my doll shirt video. To start my next row, I'm going to chain 1. And that chain is going to count as the first stitch of the row, so I'll mark that stitch with my bobby pin. Then I'm going to single crochet into the third chain from my hook to begin the row. I'm going to do this to begin every row so that the front of the vest stays open. Now if you're making yours with a hood or collar, this is where you should skip to. Next I need to widen for the shoulders. If you want to make your doll's vest with really thin shoulders, you should skip this step so that you don't add any more rows to the straps. But to widen the straps, first I'm going to divide the number of chains in the foundation chain, not counting the chain 1 I made to count as the first stitch of the row, by 6, to find the number I need to increase by. If you're making a jacket with a hood or a collar, instead of counting the number of stitches in the foundation chain, you should count the number of stitches in the last row you made and divide that by 6 instead, to find the number to increase by. But it should be the same number if you've been following along. So I'm going to go on increasing until I reach the width I want for the doll's shoulder straps. For my doll, since I had 12 chains, I increased every second stitch of the row for my first row of increase. To continue increasing 6 times per row, just keep increasing by the next number. If in the first row you increased every 3rd stitch, then in the next row you would increase every 4th stitch, and in the next row you would increase every 5th stitch, then in the next row every 6th stitch, and so on. I added 2 more rows of increase, every 3rd stitch of the row,
and every fourth stitch of the row. Alright, I finished increasing for the shoulders. In the next row, I'm going to create the armholes. If your doll's chest is particularly big, you can continue to increase this row to make the jacket even wider. To do that, mark three stitches at each end of the work, and increase into each of those stitches. But I'm not going to do that for this doll since the chest is already wide enough. So chain one for the first stitch. Then single crochet into the third chain from the hook. And then single crochet into the next four stitches until you get to where the first armhole should go. All right, I finished the first six stitches of the row. I'm gonna place the armhole here. And once again, where you're placing the arm may vary, so just measure against your doll. Now to make the armhole, I'm going to chain four. And skip six stitches. And single crochet into the next stitch. If you made a bigger doll and want bigger armholes, skip and chain more than six, but make sure to keep the same ratio by chaining two less than your skipped stitches. For example, if you chain 10, skip 12, chain eight, skip 10, chain six, skip eight, etc. Also, bear in mind that these skipped stitches and the chains and the sides of the two single crochets on each side of the armhole will count as a stitch when making the sleeves in the next part of the video. If you like, you could mark those chains to keep track of where they are. Now I'm going to single crochet across the back until I get to where I want the next armhole to go. I've already done one single crochet after skipping those stitches for the armhole. Now I'm going to single crochet into the next five stitches across the back until I get to where the next armhole should go. Next I'm going to repeat the same thing I did to create the first armhole to make another one on the other side. So chain four and skip six stitches. and single crochet in the next stitch. Then I'm gonna do the same thing as I did on the other side. I'm gonna single crochet into the last five stitches of the row. But if you increase three on the other side to make the chest bigger, you should increase three on this side too. If you made a bigger doll or a doll with a bigger chest, you could continue to increase this way for as many rows as you like, but for my doll, I'm not going to increase for any more rows. If you want, you could also mark the chains at the other armhole. Next, I'm going to continue with the armholes. As you can see, the armholes have added these curves to the sides of the vest. In the next row, to make the sides more straight, I'm going to do some increases and decreases in that area to even out the row. If you want to learn some different ways to decrease, or if you just want more practice with decreasing and increasing, check out my increasing and decreasing tutorial by clicking the link on the screen.
So I'm going to single crochet until I reach the chains that I made for the first armhole. Alright, now I'm going to skip this first chain, and increase the next two chains, and then skip the last chain. So skip that first chain, then increase the second, single crochet twice into that chain, then increase again into the next chain, and then skip the last chain. So I'm going to single crochet until I get to the chains on the other side. Where I'm going to skip the first chain, increase the second and third chain, and skip the last chain. Then single crochet until the end of the row. Next I'm going to finish the curves at the armholes. So I'm going to single crochet until I reach the stitch before the increases I made in the previous row. So now I'm going to decrease that stitch and the next stitch together. So pull up a loop through the front loops of the next two stitches. And single crochet to decrease. Next I'm going to increase the next two stitches. and then decrease the next two stitches together. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side when I get there. So I'm going to single crochet until I reach the stitch before the increases I made for the other armhole in the previous row. Then I'm going to decrease that stitch in the next stitch. and increase the next two stitches, and then decrease into the next two stitches. Then single crochet until the end of the row. Alright, I've completed the armholes. Next I'll add a few rows of single crochet to lengthen the vest. I'm just going to continue working single crochets for six more rows for the realistic doll since it has a longer torso. For the basic doll though, I'll just do four more rows. So I've gotten to the end of six more rows. Next I'm going to do a row of slip stitches all the way around the work. You don't have to do this if you want, you could just chain one to finish the row and cut off the yarn. Here's a vest I made without the row of slip stitches, I just like to slip stitch around to give the jacket a neater finish. Here's what it looks like without the finished edge, and here's what it looks like with the finished edge. How you do this is also going to depend on whether you made the jacket with a hood, or with a collar, or with neither. First, I'll show you how to do the basic jacket. I'm going to chain one, 
and that's going to count as the first stitch of this row. Then I'm going to make a corner at the bottom of the jacket by slip stitching into the side of the same stitch that I just chained up from. And then along the first side of the front, I'm going to slip stitch into the sides of the rows until I get to the top. How many slip stitches you do here depends on how many rows you made to complete the vest minus one. That's because I already worked the corner into the first stitch on this side, the stitch I chained up from. So for my doll, I'm going to slip stitch 11. Now I'm at the top of the first side, so I'm going to chain one to make another corner here. Then I'm going to turn the work slightly, and then slip stitch again into the same stitch. Next I'm going to slip stitch along the top where I first made my foundation chain. How many slip stitches you do here depends on how many chains were in the foundation chain, minus one. Just like on the side we already did, that's because I already worked the first corner into the first chain on the foundation. So I'll slip stitch 11. When I get to the other end of my foundation chain, I'm going to make another corner on this side, so chain one, and slip stitch again into the same stitch. Now I'm going to turn the work again, and I'm going to work another row of slip stitches along the other side of the front into the sides of the rows on this side. The amount of slip stitches on this side should be the same amount as on the other side. And at the end of this section, I'm going to make another corner by chaining one and slip stitching again into the same stitch. And now I'm going to work a row of slip stitches along the bottom of the vest. How many slip stitches you create here depends on how many stitches were in the last row of the vest minus one. Again, that's because the corner is already worked into in the first stitch of the row. Now I've gotten back to the corner where I started, so I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch of the row and cut off the yarn, and then sew in my ends. If you made a collared or hooded vest, you should start the row of finishing slip stitches in the same way by slip stitching into the sides of the rows at the front of the vest. If you made your vest with a collar, do everything the same way except also slip stitch into the sides of each row of the collar at both sides. How many slip stitches you do here depends on how many rows of collar you made. If you made a vest with a hood, start your slip stitch row in the same way. When you get to the top of the front of the vest, continue to slip stitch into the sides of the rows until you get to the top of the hood. 
How many slip stitches you do here depends on how many rows you did to complete the hood, plus one for the foundation chain. Then slip stitch down the sides of the rows on the other side until you get to the bottom of the hood. The amount of slip stitches on this side of the hood should be the same amount as on the other side. And now the vest is done. Next I'm just going to line the zipper up with the front of the coat using some pins. and I'm going to use my needle and thread to sew the zipper down. If you want to see how I did this in more detail, check out my zipper shortening and sewing tutorial. And now my doll's vests are done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like or share it on social media. In my next video, I'll show you how to make the sleeves for the jacket. If you want to see more basic doll tutorials, you can find a playlist at the end of this video or check in the description below. If you want to support me in making new videos, donate to my Patreon. It's entirely optional, but if you do, you can get some perks like having access to my videos a week before they're posted here on YouTube. You can find more information at patreon.com slash fairyrings. The link will be in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye!